today I'll be covering a subsection of games which can prove to be quite frustrating at times, gotcha games. If you haven't heard of gotcha, it's a system which is pretty similar to loot boxes. You try to get items based on luck, rarer items are obviously harder to get, and it's an easy way for players to drain their wallets if they're not careful. According to an article on How To Geek, the biggest difference is that loot boxes are often not a primary game mechanic, while the items you obtain from the gotcha system will affect gameplay. In some gotcha games, if you don't have the right items, moving through the story mode will be painfully difficult. It's like hitting an invisible paywall. In order to move forward, players will have to repeat levels or pull stronger items. But what happens when a gotcha game makes that paywall disappear? Genshin Impact is a game that does exactly that. If you haven't heard of it by now, for once I'm not the one living under a rock. It's a work in progress game developed by miHoYo and available for free on mobile, PC, and Xbox devices. It's planned to be released on the Nintendo Switch as well, and might I add that the graphics are stunning? The game has huge Breath of the Wild vibes, and it borrows many mechanics such as gliding, cooking, and stamina. However, it's fundamentally different in terms of the battle system. Rather than playing a single character, players create teams of up to four and battle enemies with a variety of weapons and elemental reactions. The stronger weapons and characters are locked behind the gotcha system, but players who want to complete the story for free are still able to do so. How? Let's take a look at what Genshin Impact does differently by studying styles of play and narrative design. Roger Kaiwa was a French intellectual from the 20th century who studied a wide variety of disciplines, including games and play. He separated games into several categories, but the two most notable ones are Ludus and Pedia. The terms were originally used to separate the difference between games and play, and Kaiwa provided many examples of this in his 1961 book, Man, Play, and Games. Modern scholars, such as Gonzalo Frasca, have diverged from the original definitions, suggesting that Ludus encompasses games with social rules and a win condition, such as sports, while Pedia consists of more improvisational games that you can't really win, such as Dress Up. How does this apply to Genshin Impact? Well, the game starts with some background information, implying that your primary goal is to locate the corrupt god which kidnapped your twin. However, as you venture through the world for clues, you find yourself quickly sidetracked when the city of Mondstadt begs you to be their dragon pest control. The main story quest acts as a sort of tutorial, which teaches you the basics of fighting, gliding, and whatever else the game has to offer. As you get stronger, Mondstadt will begin to turn to you for help in completing commissions and bounties. The idea of rescuing your sibling goes to the back of your head as you embark on adventures to fight enemies and collect treasure. It's undeniable that there are elements of Ludus embedded into Genshin Impact. Story quests have goals which you need to fulfill in order to be rewarded. Domains require you to navigate puzzles to move forward, and special quests like those found in the Spiral Abyss require you to defeat opponents under a number of conditions. However, with the removal of strict level boundaries and the ability to explore the open world freely, the game has some Paidia elements which are not common to other gacha games. As activities become more decentralized from the main storyline, players are given more freedom to create their own role in the game. Next, let's talk about narrative design. Clara Fernandez Vada, the author of Introduction to Game Analysis, defined this as a discipline which focuses on the different aspects that define the rules and the fictional world. This is a fancy way of asking why the player performs certain actions in terms of the narrative. For example, why can the player in Genshin Impact choose to start a new quest when one is already in progress? Narratively, this could be explained by the Traveler having to multitask between helping the Knights of Favonius, the Adventurer's Guild, Venti, and other characters who know of their reputation. Using the logic behind the game's narrative design, players are able to justify any actions they take as progression, even if they aren't moving forward in the main story. Another way which Genshin Impact utilizes narrative design is by axing the stamina system. And I don't mean the running kind. In several other gacha games, players have to use stamina in order to initiate a level and advance through the main story. This limits how much players can progress in one sitting, unless they're willing to pay for more stamina with real cash. Genshin Impact does not have this system in place for most of the time. Players are able to finish quests, commissions, bounties, challenges, and a variety of other things without being hindered by an extra diegetic counter. 
The one exception to this is original resin, but we don't talk about that because it's, uh, it, it creates more of an issue in the end game than it does during the main storyline. Overall, the unique Padia elements along with the flexible narrative design allow players to create a complex role for themselves. They are no longer a mere person separated from their sibling. They are a traveler, a knight, and a hero to all. The creation of such a broad role eases the player into feeling that whatever actions they take will make themselves a better adventurer. In the event that players hit a level cap while trying to advance in the main story, they're able to take on another aspect of their role in order to train themselves. Grinding for resources doesn't feel as tedious as it does in other gacha games. Of course, there are things that Genshin Impact does in order to make progression through the story accessible to all players. But by using these two tools, the game is able to manipulate the player's role in order to engage them with various aspects of the world, thus helping to eliminate the invisible paywall.